So we are the 99%. And I'm so glad to be with all of you, with over 15 cities across Canada, with hundreds of cities across the United States, with over 1,700 cities across this planet, all together today saying that the world that we built doesn't work for us, saying that we want a different world, saying that we want a different system, saying that we want a system that doesn't just work for the rich, doesn't just work for the 1%, but a system that works for all of us. One of the things that the people that started the Wall Street movement that has echoed across the United States and has echoed across Canada and is today is echoing across the world, the people are concerned about is the increasing corporate influence over our political institutions. We are seeing corporations being able to dictate public policy. You only have to walk a few blocks away from here to know and to see an example of what I mean. The Department of the Environment, do you know what the address of the Department of the Environment is, what building it's in? It's in Petroleum Plaza. We want the oil out of politics. I think we know all too well how it's influencing our public policy. And while oil may run our cars today, it definitely shouldn't run our government ever. So why are they allowed to do this? Well, part of the reason is because the 1% doesn't live where a lot of communities that are part of the 99% do. They don't live next to, on lands where the pipelines are breaking and pipelines are spilling. They don't live on lands next to refineries and are dealing with rising health risks in their community, rising cancer rates in their community. That's not where they live. They don't live in houses like Jessica Ernst who can light her water on fire because of hydraulic fracking. They don't live there. They don't live downstream of the tar sands and drink that water every single day or eat the fish that are seeing more and more cancerous tumors. That's not where they live. That's where people, where communities from the 99% live. And that's why we're saying that it's time that we had a different world. We want to turn away from a system that's based on a suicidal presumption. It's based on a presumption that we can grow forever. And when we have a finite planet, we have one world, we have one earth, and we have one chance to get it right. And even though we have communities all over this planet, communities on small island nations, like the Maldives, who are evacuating entire nations, people who can never go back to their homeland ever because of rising sea levels, even though the global scientific community is warning us about the threats of the climate crisis, saying how we need to turn back now or else it might be too late. We have our governments, we have corporations that are pushing us over the edge. And today I'm so glad to stand with all of you because we are pushing back. We are pushing back in this city, in cities across Canada, in cities across the U.S., and in cities across the world to build that different system. And I'm also happy because this is not the end, but this is another beginning. People have described it as an awakening. And we are not going to go away. We are not going to go away until we have a system that works for the majority of us. Because it's just like the Matrix. When you take that blue pill, you can't go back. Once you start seeing the inequities in the system, once you start seeing the cracks, you can't turn away from them. And so we are going to unite all struggles. We have a huge laundry list of issues. So it's not just about one, it's about this huge list that we have decided that it's time that it needs to be addressed. And we here, we people all over this globe, are going to get it addressed until we have the planet that we deserve. I want to finish off with one of my favorite quotes by Aaron Dotty Roy. Another world is not only possible, she's on her way. On a quiet day, you can hear her breathing. Well, today, I think she would be okay with me saying,
Today, you can hear her screaming. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mike!